Hello and welcome to Ask the Consistory, a video podcast produced by the Confessional Orthodox Evangelical Lutheran Communion. I'm your host for this video, Reverend Jake Zabel of the St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church, located in Dolby, Queensland, Australia. Now, today's question that I'm going to be tackling in this video is, is absolution a sacrament? Now, this is a often debated topic in the Lutheran Church, whether absolution should or shouldn't be considered a sacrament. And so to answer this question, I'm going to be looking at both the Lutheran Confessions and also the Enchiridion written by Martin Chemnitz. And basically, I want to look at two places in the Lutheran Confessions. One place where I think absolution is implied to be a sacrament, and one place where Melanchthon just explicitly calls absolution a sacrament. And so the first place I want to look at this is the Augsburg Confession, where if you get to Articles 7 and 8, they're on the church, and here the church is defined as the place where the gospel is preached purely and the sacraments are administered rightly. Then Melanchthon goes into a few more articles. Article 9 is on baptism, Article 10 is on Holy Communion, and then Article 11 is on Confession, and Article 12 on Repentance. And then right after that, when you get to Article 13, it's titled Concerning the Use of the Sacraments. So between the article on the Church, which defines the Church as the place where the sacraments are administered, Melanchthon speaks of Baptism, Holy Communion, and Confession and Repentance. And right after that, he then talks about the use of the sacraments. This would seem to imply that confession absolution is actually a sacrament. But I think a more poignant place in the Lutheran Confessions that speaks of absolution as a sacrament is the Apology of the Augsburg Confession. If you turn to Article 13 of the Apology, it's actually titled The Number and Use of the Sacraments. And... Here Melanchthon talks about the fact that the Catholics have their seven sacraments, but he speaks of how the ancient church never actually put a number on the sacraments. And then Melanchthon goes to define what we as the Lutherans teach a sacrament is. He says, if we define the sacraments as rites, which have the command of God and to which the promise of grace has been added, it is easy to determine what the sacraments are, properly speaking. For human instituted rights are not sacraments, properly speaking, because human beings do not have the authority to promise grace. Therefore, signs instituted without the command of God are not sure signs of grace, even though they perhaps serve to teach or admonish the common folks. Therefore, the sacraments are actually baptism, the Lord's Supper, and absolution, the sacrament of repentance. For these rites have the command of God and the promise of grace, which is the essence of the New Testament. For surely our hearts ought to be certain that we are baptized when we eat the body of our Lord, and when we are absolved, God truly forgives us on account of Christ. So here Melanchthon actually calls absolution a sacrament on par with baptism and holy communion. If we turn later on in this article, when we get to point 17, he states that no intelligent person will argue much about the number or the terminology, as long as those things are retained that have the mandate and the promises of God. So basically, in the Apology, Melanchthon speaks about how the early church never really had a number designated to the sacraments, nor really a definition of the sacraments in the early church. Instead, in Melanchthon's opinion, the sacraments are the means of grace, those things that forgive us our sins, those things that have been instituted by Christ and commanded by Christ and have the promises of the forgiveness of sins. This is how Melanchthon defines a sacrament. Therefore, Melanchthon considers baptism, the Lord's Supper, and absolution to be sacraments. However, Melanchthon does finish his section by saying, we shouldn't argue over the number or terminology of sacraments. Basically saying if some people want to hold absolution as a sacrament and some people don't, we shouldn't divide the church over that. It really depends on how you want to define a sacrament. 
For example, if we get the Enchiridion of Martin Chemnitz, he doesn't consider absolution a sacrament. And this is because of the way that Chemnitz defines a sacrament. In question 215, Chemnitz asks the question, what things are required as essential parts to make a sacrament in the New Testament? And he says there are two things. First, an outward or visible element or sign in a certain outward ceremonial act ordained and instituted in the New Testament by Christ by a special word and express command and committed to the whole church to the end that it be used to the end of the world. Second, the word of promise of grace joined to the element in that act, namely that the sacraments were instituted by Christ for this purpose and use, that through them as outward means and visible testimonies, he wants to set forth, apply, give, confirm, and seal individually to those who use them in true faith, the promise of grace, which is at other times proclaimed and offered in the gospel to all in general. And so in question 219, when Chemnitz is asked, is absolution a sacrament? He says, absolution indeed has one mark characteristic of the sacraments, namely that the universal promise of the gospel is applied and sealed individually to each believer through absolution. And in view of this mark, some are not wrong in that they number absolution among the sacraments of the New Testament. But since no outward sign or element was ordained and instituted by Christ for its administration, it cannot properly be called a sacrament in the way in which baptism and the Lord's Supper are called sacraments. Yet wars about words are not therefore to be stirred up, provided the things itself taught in Scripture are kept pure as the Apology of the Augsburg Confession teaches. So here, Chemnitz doesn't think absolution is a sacrament because he defines the sacrament as that which has the physical elements. Hence, baptism has water and Holy Communion has bread, wine, body and blood. And so Chemnitz does not consider absolution a sacrament. Yet he says that people are not necessarily wrong if they wish to consider absolution a sacrament. As he says, even the Augsburg Confession says, we shouldn't have wars over words here. We shouldn't argue the number and terminology of the sacraments, as long as those things which God has commanded us to do are kept. So, according to the Lutheran Confessions, absolution is considered a sacrament, if you define a sacrament as that which is a means of grace and you don't use the definition that a sacrament requires a physical element. If you wish to take Chemnitz's definition that a sacrament does require a physical sign, then absolution is not a sacrament. So I hope this helps to answer the question, and I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I have been your host, Reverend Jake Zabel. Goodbye, and God bless.